So having done NPV, now let us understand the internal rate of return or as it's called IRR, right? NPV and IRR. Okay. <coughs> IRR, the internal rate of return, expresses the project return in percentage terms. This is one of the advantages that you get it in a percentage. So some people find it easier. You understand something when it's said it's 12% or 15%. When you get a whole number like in NPV, you have 100,000, 200,000, how do you relate it, right? So, so this is one of the advantages of IRR that it, it expresses, the, uh, it, it, it's return. What is IRR? It's a rate of return. So there is a percentage there. What is the internal rate of return? It is supposed to be that discount rate, right? that equates the present value of the expected net cash flows with the initial cash outflow. It is the rate which will make NPV of a project equal to zero. Can you remember that? So what is IRR? IRR is that rate, that rate. If you use that rate as the discount rate, the NPV will be equal to zero. It's the rate which will make the NPV of a project equal you use the, this rate, if you use 15% as the rate of discount and that NPV, when you use 15%, it becomes equal to zero, that would be the internal rate of return. In the NPV computation, we assume that the discount rate is known and determine the NPV of the project, yes or no, we take a certain rate of discount, it's given to us, it's supposed to be the cost of capital or it is supposed to be the, 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 the cost of alternative or the, or the return from alternative investments, the opportunity cost, so to say, right? <coughs> so we know that in NPV, we know the discount rate, at least we take some discount rate, that is known, and then we find out NPV. But IRR, it's the, it's different, it's the other way around. We assume the NPV is zero, and then try to find out the discount rate, which satisfies this condition. So NPV will be zero, therefore what is the rate? That is what we do in IRR, Okay. <laughs> what is the acceptance criteria? The computed IRR is usually compared with a given target rate, the company's required rate of return. If the IRR equals or exceeds this cutoff rate, the project is accepted, otherwise it is rejected. In case of two mutually exclusive projects, the one with the higher IRR is preferred. So the computed IR, you again you compute with the target rate. If it is lower, reject the project. If it is greater, you accept the project equal to or greater, you can accept the project, right? If you have two mutually exclusive projects there, then you prefer the one with the higher IRR. Higher NPV, higher IRR. Okay? Now, let's take an example. Understand this. Students, there could be different ways of doing it. So I'm explaining a few things. Be very clear. Go slow. You want to watch it over again, do that again. Don't get confused. There may be alternative, different ways of computing this, arriving at the same conclusion. If you if you approach it from different angles and thinking, you will be more conceptually clear. Now, let us see. A company invests $279,820 in a project with expected cash flow of $100,000 each for four years. If the minimum required rate of return is 15%, would the project be accepted? And what is the project's internal rate of return? This is your question. This is your outflow. With expected cash flow of 100,000 for each year for 4 years. This is also given to you. Now, 15% is the minimum requirement. Would it be accepted? So, let's just, let's just put the PV table here. Okay. The annual cash flow is equal each year. So, we need the annuity table. So, I have taken the annuity table here, okay? And you've taken at 15% and you have 4 years, 2.855, okay? At 15%, the present value of the cash inflows, can I say is 100,000 is 2.8550. This is the rate I'm looking at. Are you clear with this concept? Do you remember what does this, this is the PBIFA table. What does this mean? What does 2.855 mean? Are you clear? This means that if you get $1 at the end of each year for 4 years, so totally you are getting actually $4. Yes or no? What is this present value? Its value today, present value is only 
is 2.855. If one dollar becomes 2.855, if you get hundred thousand, then it would be equal to 285500. Correct. At 15 percent, so at 15 percent, when you say you have a positive, uh, sorry, uh, it's not yet NPV. This is only the cash inflow. This is the outflow. Therefore, you have a positive NPV. Yes or no? NPV is equal to five six eight zero two eight five five hundred. This is your inflow two seventy nine eight twenty. That's your outflow. So the net present value is five six eight zero, which means which means if you have positive, this is not the internal rate of return. At fifteen percent, you have you have a positive NPV. Therefore, your discount rate must be higher because I need an NPV equal to zero to find out the IRR. So you will obviously at IRR the NPV must be zero, so IRR will be higher. Therefore, we will accept the project. That that answers one part of the question. Followed. Okay. What is the project's IRR? So the same thing. Again, annual. We are referring to the annuity table. At IRR, NPV should be equal to zero. Or the discounted cash inflows should be equal to the discounted cash outflow. The cash outflow, you know, is two seventy nine eight twenty. It is in year one, <coughs> not year one. Sorry, it's at year zero, which means your multiple is one. So your discounted cash outflow is equal to two seventy nine eight twenty. So basically, your discounted cash inflows should also be two seventy nine eight twenty to find out the IRR. Yes or no? So. So can I say two seventy nine eight twenty? What is this? This is the cash outflow is equal to cash inflow is hundred thousand. This is hundred thousand, correct? Hundred thousand into the present value interest factor of an annuity, right? So so the required PVIFA present value interest factor of an annuity should be two point seven nine eight two. Followed, so we get two point seven nine eight. Now this is for four years. If I look at the annuity table for four years, one, two, three, four, do I have? I'll go and try to find out the closest two point seven nine. Wow, I'm lucky. I've got exactly that figure. I may not sometimes get precisely this closest to. I can get two point seven nine eight two. Yes or no? So this must be sixteen percent. If you take it at sixteen percent. <laughs> right then, then, then that is the IRR because at sixteen percent your NPV will be equal to zero. Your inflows will be hundred thousand into two point seven nine eight two two seven nine eight two zero, which is exactly equal to the initial investment. Followed simple. So when there are equal cash flows, it becomes much easier. Just not noted down the steps here. First, you see the total initial investment where cash flows are equal, mind you. Okay. The predetermined cutoff rate. This you don't really need unless you want to decide whether to accept or not to accept the uh, project. Right. Next, you come to uh, the net cash inflows. Divide the initial investment by the annual cash flow to get the IRR factor. That is the PVIF. Look at the PV annuity table. Look at the discount rate at that number of years, which is closest to this IRR factor. Follow? Uh, closest to the IRR. Therefore, you get the IRR. Of course, IRR can be compared to this IRR, the predetermined rate to decide whether to accept or not to accept. If the IRR is equal to or greater than the given predetermined rate, then we can go ahead and we can go ahead and take the project. Yeah, the same thing, students. I'm just showing you another way of computing, or I just want to explain interpolation with a simple example. That is why uh, the annual cash flow is equal each year. We know this. We check the annuity table. We got this is sixteen percent. We know IRR sixteen percent. We accept the project. This is exactly what we did. I hope you've understood. This is nothing but just a revision. What did you do first? Take this investment, divide it by. See, this is the formula. E equate it, so you will remember. Cash outflow is given to you. You know that is two seventy nine eight twenty. That's the equation you are getting. 
that is equal to the cash inflows which is 100,000 into PVIFA. You don't have to mug up this PVIFA, right? So, so obviously, what is PVIFA? It must be the initial investment by the annual income cash flows. Therefore, you get PVIFA. Then you go to that uh, PVIFA 1, 2, 3, 4th year, go to the, go to the uh, find number in, in 4 years, closest to this PVIFA factor, which I, we got to 1792, and therefore you arrive at 16%, because it's greater than 15%, you accepted the project. It's the same thing, students, the same slide, same presentation. I hope it is clear, just, just to revise revision of the steps. I repeat, that's the smallest doubt. Go back, understand thoroughly. It's a simple concept, but you might take initially a little time to just so that it registers in your head. So do invest that time. Give it that time. Be very clear. Now, <coughs> now another way of doing it, this we don't normally use when there are equal cash flows, but I thought I will first mention how to do it cash flow so that when I come to unequal cash flows, it's much easier for you to understand. It gives you a double revision. You stick to the initial method I did, but just see what, what observe this. Now, uh, they gave us a return of 15%. So, we took 15% and we found out that we got a positive NPV of 5680. Remember? Okay. So, the NPV has to be 0. So, IRR must be higher than 15%. Okay, now suppose you take the 20% table. So, I need look at 20% table because I know it's more than 15%. Instead of jumping to 16, let's say I just look at 20%. <coughs> now, at 20%, the NPV is equal to uh, 100,000 into 20%, it is 2.5887, right? Multiply that. Now, you get a negative figure. So, so the IRR now you understand has to be between 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 15% and 20%. Between 15% and 20%. Is it clear? <coughs> In this case, I mean, it's both of this, by observation, of course, we know that the required rate here is uh, 16%. Okay? But there is something called interpolation. Let us, let us understand, <coughs> understand. The interpolation, in, intrapolation. Okay, <coughs> how do you do the intrapolation? Uh, intrapolation. Let us see. It's between fifteen and twenty. Okay. Suppose this figure was not given to us. Suppose this is not given to us. Suppose the table or the figures given to you in the examination are fifteen and twenty. Let us just assume that this is not there in our chart for some reason. Suppose because sometimes you may each percentage may not be given. Or sometimes it may be a point, it may be 15.5, 15.7, 15.8, etc. Not exactly a round figure, correct? In that case, what do you do? You have drawn the conclusion that it is something between 15 and 20. This, this is clear, right? And you don't have this number. Suppose, suppose, okay? Then what do you do? Now, between 15 and 20, the difference is 5%. And what is the difference in the cash flows? When you took 15%, it was 5680. When you take 20%, it is minus 209.50, right? Therefore, the difference is 26,630. We very clear here, students. It's not 5680 minus 209.50, but it is 5680 minus minus 209.50. That is 26,630. Yeah. So, we need to cover this excess cash inflow of 5680. So, this from 15% have to go on increasing the rate Till 5680 is used up, is covered. This extra 5680 has to be covered. Yes or no? So, so what do we do? We do an interpolation now. How do we do that? We get a required rate of return. We do it like this. We say, we say, how much is this? 26630, right? 26630 for 5%. But what do I want to cover? I want to cover 5680. Therefore, it must be 5% by 26630 into 5680. And I solve this, right? This is what we have done here. Solve this, I get 1. That is 1%. 1%. 
So 15%, 15% I know, plus I know one more percent <coughs> will become 15% plus or 15, sorry students, plus 1%, right? Plus 1% is equal to 16%. Do you understand? I've got 15%. I know it's more than 15%. I'm trying to find out how much more by interpolation. So how do you do that? I take, uh, <coughs> I find out the difference, 5% percentage difference, amount difference 26,630. So 26,630 is in 5%. I want to cover 5680. For that, it will be just do a unitary method. So if I got 1, therefore it should be 1%. 15 plus 1 equal to 16%. Of course, shorter the gap, my students, this is like 15 to 20. Shorter the gap, more accurate answers you get. Here it is exact, so it's not such a problem. But sometimes you get these in decimal points. I repeat, when you have equal annual cash flows, you don't need to do the interpolation. It's better that we just try to find out the PEIFA and proceed. But this is just for you to understand, understand how interpolation is done. Because when there are unequal flows, you have to do this interpolation. Okay? <clears throat>